I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Drew. Maserati Rick in Detroit. Convertible bird in Miami. Graduated summer cum loud. Strip club made a tsunami. Carlton Hines with the ball game. Rayful Edmonds with the snowflakes. Craig Pettis in the M Town. Sal Magluta with the boat game. Falcon with the cocaine. Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game. Like Monster Cody in South Central. Larry Davis from Close Range. New tonight, a historic set of indictments against suspected members of the Short North Posse. For the first time, nearly a dozen gang members are eligible for the death penalty. And now ABC6's Lisa Rondola joins us live from the newsroom with a big concern before trials start. Lisa? With this major announcement this afternoon, police, prosecutors and federal agents voice their concerns about witness intimidation. They say the people who saw something or knew something about this case have been threatened, beaten and even killed. The feds say they went by names like the Cutthroat Committee and Homicide Squad. A lot of these homicides were planned. And they were the ones who enforced gang laws governed by the Short North Posse. They were the enforcers. They were the muscle. They would be used to intimidate witnesses. I will sleep better tonight because of this as well as all of the citizens of Columbus should sleep better tonight because of this. For seven years, between 2005 and 2012, the feds say one or more of these 17 faces robbed, stole, and killed up to 13 people. Even if this is drug dealer to drug dealer, they all matter to us. And while the feds say members of this crew were hired to kill other drug dealers, rival gang members, or others with lots of cash and guns, they were also told to off people who they knew. One victim, Crystal Fife, dated alleged ringleader Brandon Ledbetter. The indictment claims he shot and killed her in 2011, so she wouldn't talk to the cops. It's okay to tell us who did it, how they did it, where they did it. We will find you and we will prosecute you, whether it's in the short term or in the long term. And in this landmark case, the largest federal murder indictment in Ohio's history. Another first for possible punishment of the posse. The feds say 11 could wind up losing their lives for taking lives during this reign of terror. The death penalty is reserved for the absolute worst of the worst. And if witness intimidation was such a big problem before these indictments, I asked the feds how they're keeping witnesses safe before trial. Hear their answer coming up at 6 o'clock. Reporting live from the newsroom, Lisa Rontala, ABC6 News. Police are searching for the News. man they call the mastermind behind a multi-million dollar drug ring. As 10TV's Maureen Kosat tells us, he's part of a gang police say very well known to Columbus authorities. She joins us live from the short north with new information on today's bust. Maureen. At Kristen, the U.S. Attorney's Office says today it rounded up 21 members of the Short North Posse. You know, investigators say a lot of the people they went after today don't even live in this neighborhood. They say they were recruited by the gang to take part in that drug distribution ring that crossed state lines. Investigators are going after 21 accused members of the Short North Posse who they say operated a multi-million dollar drug enterprise. The idea here is, is to cut off the head, and we believe we've done that. Investigators say the newest members of the gang turned Columbus into a drug distribution hub, trafficking cocaine, prescription pills, crack, and marijuana to cities as far away as Portsmouth and Youngstown and across the border into West Virginia. It's an enterprise. It's not just some street gang anymore. I mean, it's an organized enterprise. Police took down 46 original members of the Short North Posse back in March of 1995 for gun violence and drugs. Police say the gain has evolved and grown tentacles. And they've just grown up. They've grown out of the, you know, you're going to shoot a guy because he's wearing blood red and they're going... I'm going to shoot a guy because of the bottom dollar. The U.S. attorney says Germonte Fletcher, who's still on the run, is an original Short North Posse member who helped mastermind the lucrative distribution scheme. Defendants are accused of laundering nearly a million dollars worth of cash and chips at the Hollywood Casino. Columbus's chief of police says officers have taken down this gang several times before. Years ago, when the Short North Posse was a menace to that particular area, we went after them, and we attacked them, and we put them away. Police have busted up the gang at least three times in the past 18 years and say today's arrests are only the beginning.
Now, this is only phase one of that sting operation. The U.S. Attorney's Office wouldn't elaborate on that. However, investigators did say that members of the gang are suspected of using threats and acts of violence against anyone suspected of shorting the gain of drugs or money. Live in the Short North, Maureen For decades, Kosak, members of the Short North Posse distributed drugs throughout Ohio and are said to have shot and killed competitors. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Ellie Merritt. And I'm Dwayne Pullman. Today, five men believed to be responsible for the killings were in federal court. NBC4's Harrison Hove is live tonight with all the details. Harrison. Dwayne, they are in court. We're at U.S. District Court here. It's federal court. You can see U.S. Homeland Security has a police presence here. U.S. Marshals inside. We've got a metal detector right inside the front door, which is standard in federal court, but we also have a metal detector that goes into the courtroom in this case. I spent part of my day in Wyland Park. That's where the posse used to operate. That was home base. Spoke with some residents as well as business owners about that area's positive evolution. I started working with my dad. Now I work with my son and my grandson. So they get 700 degrees in there. You can get back to the muffler gun and get them to break loose. David Evans has spent decades under the hood. They've been to other shops. They couldn't figure out the problem. They bring it up here. We work on it for a while and get it figured out. Fixing cars in the Wyland Park neighborhood. His shop, Evans Auto Repair, celebrates its 50th anniversary next month. And in that time, he's witnessed a lot of change outside his window. Sugar Shack was right across the street, so we worked on Bob Seeger's van and got to listen to the drifters and Jerry Lee Lewis and everybody that played over there. Big names passed through these streets, a heyday before declining into darker times. The neighborhoods had hard times in the past. Many families moved out, businesses packed up, but Evans remained. Everybody that I can think of, Joe Shell, have all went out of, out of business. Uh, Tommy Sunoco, Gray Golf. Uh, over the years, and uh, we just were a survivor. And this survivor never stopped believing. I always had optimism that it was going to get better. You see, the, uh, the police have done a wonderful job with the crime in the neighborhood. Cutting down the crime, spurring new investment. It's now, uh, it's become a family neighborhood again. A cleaned up Wyland Park, ready for another heyday. A turn of the page, to, to quote Bob Seeger, turn the page. So nice to see a second coming for that particular neighborhood. Back behind me here at the federal courthouse in Columbus, I am told that the increased police presence will last for the remainder of this trial, which is going to be a few months at least. I'm also told the jury, which is in the process of being selected, will be offered protection too. I'm live tonight in Columbus, Harrison Hove, Five NBC4. Five members of the notorious Short North Posse are on their way to federal prison, likely for life, after a jury found them guilty today and eight murders, a string of assaults and robberies. Good evening, I'm Colleen Marshall. And I'm Mike Jackson. Thanks for joining us. The FBI had to relocate witnesses to protect them from this deadly gang that was based out of the Wineland Park neighborhood. And they've been around in one form or another for more than a quarter of a century. NBC4's Olivia Fecto spoke with neighbors in Wineland Park about today's convictions. She's live now with their reactions. Well, Mike, neighbors say Wineland Park has changed a lot in the last few years since 20 members of the Short North Posse were indicted. They say they feel relieved about the changes they've seen. Ask neighbors and they'll tell you. Almost. Wineland Park used to be a lot different. It was just very rough up here. Like, no one didn't want to come up here or live or anything. Crystal Johnson's family was hit by that violence. A cousin killed, an uncle shot. For her, it's a relief to hear five members of the Short North Posse, a violent gang once based in this neighborhood, were convicted. Christopher Harris, Robert Ledbetter, Rashad Liston, Clifford Robinson, and Deontay Ussery were found guilty on counts ranging from racketeering to murder. You do the crime, you gotta do the time, basically to me, that's how it is. Like, I mean, I didn't feel no sympathy for anyone. Neighbors say the streets are safer. I feel that we can come to the park like the children are now and play and not have to worry about someone just coming and shooting up the park. From youth sports to simply enjoying a night outside, people say the changes are evident. Crime and bad things happen anywhere. It's just, it's not what, what happens, it's what you do after. 
For some, the convictions offer a chance to heal from the violence. Finally, somebody's going to get some justice for something. Like A lot of families don't know who did something to their, or a lot of family members don't. It's missing, and maybe the people that got convicted are probably the cause of it. The men who were convicted today are the first five of the Short North Posse to go on trial. Of the remaining defendants, nine of them took plea deals. One has died. The other five are set to go on trial later this year. Live at the federal courthouse, Olivia Fecto, NBC4. Thanks so much, Olivia. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy, Pop Lot. Mob ties. We on our way to Ohio with it. The CEO. Short North, to be exact. Wineland Park, to be more exact. Now, all my niggas from Ohio, Columbus, Wineland Park, Short North. Y'all niggas getting the comment box. Let it be known real fucking G shit. Now, the guys that we going to be covering today is going to be a, a bunch of dudes. Actually, we just going to call them the Short North Posse because that's what y'all know them as. Now... They've been in existence, it almost could have been two episodes, because this organization is something like um, the Black Mafia in Philly, or the Junior Black Mafia in Philly, if you, a lot of y'all remember when we covered them, I'm sure y'all heard of them, um, it was pretty much an organization where some guys in the past um, pretty much started the organization, mm -hmm. then they faced mm -hmm. numerous law enforcement um, I guess mm. numerous problems with law enforcement where they were thought to be dismantled and then the gang has came back um, pretty much and assembled almost as another gang but under the same name now as far as years in existence it's estimated that they've been in existence um over 25 years they said the gang started back in 1989 um i want to say they faced the the first round um of the indictments as far as the gang when i said it was two parts i want to say happened in 1995 where they uh took a lot of the guys off the streets and it was pretty much um murders and drug and and racketeering pretty much drug dealing and that's also the same charges that um, they took them off the streets also with during the second wave. Um, and now it's estimated that they were responsible for 20 homicides in the area. Now with the most recent prosecution of the gang, they said it took law enforcement about three and a half years to investigate them. 21 people were um indicted i want to say possibly even more than that the youngest victim or the youngest of the defendant at the time was a guy by the name of jonathan Holt. he was only 17 years old um when this happened a lot of the gang members were facing um the death penalty so sometimes you'll see like even with the junior black mafia you'll see where maybe one member might face the death penalty there was a few of these dudes um, on trial actually facing a death penalty. Um, throughout, through the investigation, the the prosecution gained, I guess, 13 guilty pleas. Um, they went to trial for about 10 weeks. Um, and they called up to 118 witnesses, 69 of the witnesses being law enforcement or like forensic experts now five people um took it to trial and they were found guilty um that it it was um it was a, like a high i want to say a high alert trial because they had to like stash witnesses it said because pretty they said that they they would hunt and they would kill down witnesses and they actually said that just during this investigation alone and just in overtime that the the police officers that were investigating this gang were in overtime it cost the city 100 and nearly nearly 120,000 dollars 
Um, not to mention the regular man hours that they needed to cover this gang. Um, now, a few of the defendants in the in the case, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go down the list and just kind of name out a few guys. Um, one is going to be a guy by the name of Robert Ledbetter. Um, he was convicted of racketeering and um, I want to say four murders, and that was going to be of Alan Johnson, Rodriguez Williams, Marshall Brumfield Jr., and it looks like um, Crystal Fife. Another defendant is going to be a guy by the name of Christopher Harris. He was also convicted of racketeering and murders. Um, the murders he were convicted of was a uh, one by the name of, a guy by the name of Marcus Peters. Another guy by the name of Donathan Moon. He was also convicted for the Rodrigo Williams um, slang and the Marshall Brumfield Jr. slang. Another guy is going to be a guy by the name of Rashad Liston. He was also convicted of the racketeering and murders. And that was going to be um, of the murder of Rodrigo Williams. Another guy by the name of Tyrell Davis. And also the murder of Marshall Brumfield Jr. Um, another guy named Diotney Ashuri. He was also convicted of murders and racketeering. And pretty much those same murders that we mentioned, Marcus Peters, Marshall Brumfield, and then another guy by the name of Dante Hill. And um, they have a guy by the name of Clifford Robinson. And he was convicted of murder and racketeering. Um, and the murder he was convicted of was the Donathan Moon um, crime. And then now I'm going to go down a list and just name a few more. Um... There's another guy by the name of Robert Wilson, another guy by the name of Alan Wright, another guy by the name of Lance Green, Ishmael Bowers, Joseph Hill, Troy Patterson, Deshaun Smith, Lance Reynolds, Christopher Wharton, Andre Brown, Thomas Coates, Ty Sin Gordon, Freddie Johnson, and they also um, have um, two defendants that died while they were awaiting trial. It was going to be a guy by the name of Rasta Man Williams. Um, he was accused of the slaying of Donathan Moon and also Jonathan Holt. He was accused of the murder of a guy named Quincy Battle. Now, we're not going to get, I'm not going to get too, too in deep, um, kind of discussing the gang. We're going to get a little, little deeper as far as the history, um, and probably like to tell a little bit about the surrounding areas, but if anybody got any insight to the gang, any insights to the members, know, um, know anything about the area that they operated in, um, any of the victims that might have been affected by the gang now um i guess in detail it's kind of gonna start out like but wow well let me end it i'm gonna kind of set the stage to tell y'all a little bit about wineland park and the average home in wineland park costs about one hundred and thirty two thousand dollars um the population there is going to be 51 percent black 33 percent white so um, that was in 2000. Now in 2004, it was about 41% black and 54% white. So it's a pretty, pretty mixed area. So I want anybody that's familiar with that area, tell us a little bit about it. Tell us if the crime is still there after the gang was, um, sweeped off the streets. Y'all follow me on Instagram, Twitter, it's your boy Popalot, P-O-P -P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all subscribe, y'all hit the bell if y'all want to know when this trail shit is dropping. It's your boy Pop. Mop, 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 ties.